Hey, what's up turtles? It's Crick here with Black Owl Outdoors. And today I wanted to do a video highlighting a resource of the forest, which has multiple uses. And specifically what I'm referencing is the bark of the tulip tree. I want to say the genus is maybe Liriodendron. The characteristics of this bark are pretty great for actually starting fires, using for tinder, making cordage, and just has that fibrous sort of characteristic that then you can you know, use your imagination of what that would be good for. So I'm gonna show some examples of it, show how it's found in the state you know, you wanna be looking for it if you wanna use it as a tinder bundle, and show kind of a characteristic of the tree in the winter months that makes it easy to spot and sort of you can use it as a directional point to go look for tinder and or if you wanted to make some cordage. I have an example of a dead branch in front of me right now and the characteristics I was, was talking about and referencing of the fibrous nature, the shreddy type style bark, is very apparent right here in this example. And this is a branch that is probably maybe was hanging dead on the tree and then has since fallen through forces unknown. And you can see this as I pull at this, you can see the fibers just running the length of the bark. And now this is the outer bark is taken off of this, which has probably just fallen off through time. And this is right underneath, if you can pick this up right here, would be the outer bark, this gray, which would be covering all these fibers. And you see you peel, push that back and the fibers are exposed. So basically, instantly when you see a resource like this that has this fibrous characteristics that are running, you know, that are continuous and running the length of, of the plant in any way, um, it's noticeable to you. Few things go off in the head is one it's probably going to be pretty good you know whether it's really great or not can be used to make cordage and then the strength is obviously dependent on the plant um, but you can see as I pull this apart and I'm, I'm being rough with it right now but if I really wanted to use this for for rope I'd be a lot gentler with it I'd break this off and really make sure I'm getting all these strands and a bunch that are connected to make it really easy And then right there, you see how I have all of this. And if I wanted to make this a tinder bundle, which I have some dried in my pocket, just completely pull this apart, spend the time, pull this apart, get it really nice and fluffy, get out all this outer bark at, from it, the thicker pieces, don't need it. This is the outer bark I'm referring to. Pull this apart, continue doing this. I can feel there's moisture in here right now. So I wouldn't even try to put a spark to it right now until I broke this up and put it in my pocket. One, that, one a pocket that's as close to my actual skin as possible to try to get this. And just continue this until I have a small little bundle like this. Keep working at it. And if you break it up, you should, you know, put it next to your face. I'm not picking up any moisture on it. Break this up, I can see it's dusting. I'm gonna put a spark to it. Now I could make a whole tinder bundle like this if I was doing a friction fire. I could actually, you know, get a nice big couple handfuls of this and actually make it my bird's nest. Um, if I just wanted to get a fire with a ferro rod, I can get a little piece like this, throw a spark on it, get the flame, then add some bigger pieces or even add more, some more of this bark. But nonetheless, it's a great resource and for fire, I'm going to throw a spark on it, we'll see what happens. Doesn't want to go.
What I could do is just take a little bit of this and really spend some time lacerating it. Just take it in my hands. Get it really together. I'm trying to do this. Flip, turn it on itself. Have that and open that back up now. Let's give it another whirly bird. And there we go. Didn't want to go first, play around with it. You know, work it, work it till it goes. The bark from the tulip tree. Sheath my knife. So why I chose to show this resource, resource right now in the winter time, you can tell it's winter, there's some snow around me, is because there's not a lot of organic plant material that makes it uh, maybe easier in the spring, summer months to find really dry tinder. So there's barks present year round, and yes, it'll pick up moisture, but it's still here year round regardless of the season. If it's wet, it'll just take a little bit uh, longer time to dry. So I just want to point out for that particular reason. And a characteristic of this tree is pretty noticeable in this eastern woodlands and the hardwood mixed conifer forest. I'll try to show you an example silhouetted against the sky. If you look up at this tree canopy, first of all, a couple characteristics of the tulip tree is they grow really, really straight. And if you see at the top, the crown of these trees right here, there is little, you could, on the camera's probably only picking it up, but it, it just looks like maybe, you know, imagine my fist being closed with some contrast on it. It looks like little buds on the bottom of the trees, or the top of the trees, excuse me. Maybe they look like leaves hanging on, but they're not leaves. All the other um, deciduous trees have lost their leaves. But what's present are this part of the flower and fruit body of the tree and they persist throughout the winter so it's a very easy characteristic to identify this tree in the winter. I can see it from a distance in the canopy so if I'm looking for tinder, it's a wet day, I can spot this off in the distance, go underneath these trees, look for fallen dead branches, pick up some bark, put it in my pocket, keep moving and I know I'm going to have a dry source of tinder if I need to get a fire going later. If you have any experience with this resource let me know if, you're, if you've used it for anything, any other great uh, resources and tender options for the winter, let me know. I always like to know the specifics of different areas, um, not just in the eastern, northeastern US where we are now, but all over the world for people in, in the country finding the specific resources used for what. Because um, that's part of just being in the forest and knowing where you are. It, you know, I, I know the few options of tinder I have, which is not an easy resource to find, but it is present. So when I'm in this eastern woodlands, I know I can look for tulip trees. I know the bark's good. And I sort of have that comfort when I come out um, to understand that there is that resource there and it is present and I know the characteristics to look for it. So share some of the great resources you like. Please let me know the tinder options in your area that you like that maybe persist throughout the winter. Hope the video was helpful and informative. Hope I didn't talk too much. Remember to check us out on blackoutdoors.com or Instagram or Facebook. This is Crick signing out with Black Outdoors. Later, turtles.